Hey, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. So in these next four videos, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to do and consider when you want to change your 30 amp RV system to a 50 amp system. The, this video is accompanied by a blog post I did that is going to give you the general shopping list you need, all the products you need to get uh, for the conversion, as well as uh, some tips and information. Uh, but the, the biggest thing you'll get on the blog post is diagrams that I used. So you're definitely going to need a diagram of what your electrical system will look like afterward. And you can also download a diagram of what my 30 amp system looks like. So which might be very comparable to yours. So that you know from looking at one diagram to the next, you know what wire gauges need to be changed, which wires need to go where, when, how they're going to change and stuff like that. So those diagrams are really important and I used the diagram the entire way through even even already in the midst of the project I would uh, constantly be referencing the diagram so I highly recommend you get those and if you're serious about doing the conversion and follow along uh, on those diagrams through this video to really maximize your understanding and uh, and benefit from it and the other thing I want to mention is I did not do this alone. Uh, I had help, like tremendous help. And I just want to send a huge, like enormously huge shout out to the Xantrex application engineers, uh, particularly the ones I worked with at Schneider Electric. They helped me. They, they pretty much told me the final diagram that I needed and helped me understand my current system so that I would, you know, would be able to map that out and, you know, relate that to the final diagram of how the system should look afterwards. So, and I mean, they answered, like, <laughs> I mean, hundreds of questions probably. So a huge shout out to them. Uh, they weren't, they're not behind this video. I just happen to have like all Xantrex products in my RV. So um, they were there just for that. Uh, so this is all on my doing. It's not, you know, they didn't like ask me to make this video or whatever. And then the other person I want to uh, give an enormous shout out to is my neighbor Mark, who I've done a video before uh, uh, when he installed his AC. So um, he helped me. He's an electrician. He helped me do the actual install once I had, you know, the diagram and the mapping all done and my shopping list, you know, I'd gotten those products and he helped me put it in. And I, I could, I literally couldn't have done this without both of them. So hopefully if you're pretty electrically savvy, you can take the information that I have collected from Schneider Electric, the Xantrex appliance engineers, and what you'll see on the video with Mark helping me and maybe use that as enough information to do your own conversion. Uh, even if you don't do it yourself um, or you know you have somebody help you it should be uh, really helpful to have this video to uh, reference. So if you have a 30 amp system in your RV like I do I suspect you have probably at least once experienced tripping your breaker. Let's say it's winter and you've got a radiant heater plugged in and you wake up and you come into the kitchen to make your favorite smoothie, you turn on the blender and you've, you've already started your computer and then suddenly you hear a pop and then all your electricity goes out. You can't have that many appliances or uh, different things going when you have a 30 amp system. However, converting to a 50 amp system will drastically change that and it'll be hard to pop the breaker if you have a 50 amp system. Just plugging into a 50 amp receptacle via shore power isn't going to give you more power. Your, your system is like only going to be able to deliver and distribute 30 amps. However, if you have a 50 amp system and you plug into a 30 amp, you will get only 30 amps uh, just because it's not providing that much. But you can't go the other way and get more. You have to actually change out a few different things and including the wires. So if you're not familiar with 
what's actually happening when you convert from a 30 amp system to a 50 amp system or the difference between those. Some people might tend to think that, oh, you're just going from 30 amps to 50 amps, you're only getting 50 extra amps of power. Well, it's actually not accurate. Uh, on a 30 amp system, you have what's called, uh, it's like one phase, we'll call it, or one leg or uh, whatever. So you're just getting 30 amps at 120 volts. When you have a 50 amp system, you're actually getting 50 amps on two different legs, which is giving you 120 volts times two. And you're getting like 70 amps extra in power because, so like with the 30 amps, you have one thing of 30 amps. With the 50 amps, you have two things of 50 amps. Uh, then also 120 times two. So if you do the, the math on that, you have, Okay, so here's the basic formula for power, which is amps times volts equals watts, or power. So if you times 30 by 120, you get 3600. If you times uh, 50 by 240, you're getting 12,000. So that's almost three and a half times more power, plus you have 70 extra amps. So it's, it's like enormous. It's not just, oh, 30 to 50, that doesn't seem like very much, but actually it really is because it's got that, uh, that dual phase, like two legs of 50 amps. So um, definitely much better than a lot of people might think. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you always, always, always wanna remember on any project, no matter what you're doing, changes, uh, whatever you're doing, alterations, if you're going to be working with electric, you got to shut off your electric. Completely unplug from shore, turn your inverter off, undo the negative side of your house batteries so that you don't have anything running through the wires or that's kind of remaining there. And um, so after that, once you know you're safe to go in and start touching wires and stuff, then you're going to want to map out what you have. And you're going to want to look at what wires, sizes, gauges, stuff like that are coming from your generator uh, and what wires and sizes and gauges again are coming from your inverter and also everything that's going up into your distribution panel. Now from your distribution panel of course you're going to have lots of little wires going out to all of your receptacles or outlets None of those have to be changed. All that's going to be changing is stuff that's coming up to this uh, to this system up here. And with a 30 amp system, you probably have, uh, so there's there's something also involved called a transfer switch. And that uh, that kind of uh, correlates with the generator. It you know says finds where is the electricity coming from the generator or the shore power, and then it switches to accommodate that. In a 30 amp one, your transfer switch is probably on the back of your panel, just it's small enough to go up there. When you have a 50 amp one, it's going to be a bigger box. It's going to look like this. This is the uh, Progressive Dynamics PD52, and it's what works with uh, the 50 amp system. So you're going to need one of these, and then you're going to need somewhere to put it too. Um, you can put it inside or you know, down underneath in a bin where I'm going to put mine. So, and then you're also going to need a, a whole new, a whole new setup up here. And I'm even going to have to replace the wood that all of this stuff goes in. So I also got a new panel because this only has so many breakers here and I'm going to have so many more breakers uh, in my new system. So I also have the progressive dynamics uh, system that's going to cleanly put all of the 50 amp breakers together on you know separating them with the inverted side versus the non-inverted side and uh, so that'll be new this will be part of the progressive dynamics this is going to be on its own this is all the Xantrex products the inverter that I have and the automatic gen start and then this I won't even need anymore <laughs> because what this is is it's a switch 
that I say which air conditioning unit I want to turn on, the front one or the back one. Because in a 30 amp system, you can only run one at a time. So in a 50 amp system, you can run both. So I'm not going to need a switch. So anyway, this will go away. Uh, however, you know, I need to know what cables are, are going to these. So I know that from this, from or to, whichever way you want to look at it, there's a, a cable that is running from here down to my generator. And uh, I'm going to, you know, that's part of the map. And, you know, I, I need to, on your map, you're going to have to like write out what size of cable that is because you might be able to reuse some of them. And, uh, and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, that's that'll go away. This will go away, and the progressive dynamics one will come in. This will go away, and then all the Xantrex stuff is going to uh, be reset. And I'll have to get a new wood panel as well, so it can all mount up there really cleanly. So once you get your little diagram done, you know, mapped out what you have, the sizes of wires, then you need to compare that to the diagram that your system needs to be for the 50 amp system. And that's where that's where you might need assistance. I again I got mine from the uh, Xantrex appliance or Xantrex application engineers at Schneider Electric. And um, you, I mean that you just can't like <laughs> pull out of thin air if you're not an electrician. So however uh, you can have mine, you can download it on my website, my blog on my website at pippinings.com. The direct link is in the description of this video. So you can access mine and get an idea of what that would look like. If you have the same system as me, you could even use that. So hopefully that'll help you out. Also, when you're dealing with breakers and new breakers, so you might be able to reuse some of your old breakers as well as some of your old wiring. However, depending on uh, what you get up here, so I've got the progressive dynamics one and you just have to get the breaker that the style will fit in. Like for example, this specific shape fits into these and this is called the um, Home, oh, let's see. It's called either like Bryant or Square D Home Line. And it doesn't really matter the brand of breaker, but you just have to get the kind that fits into your, uh, your new uh, control panel. So for the progressive dynamics one that I've got, you're just going to have to, it, it takes the Square D. So um, there could be other types of breakers that will serve the same function, but they just, you know, fit in different types of things. So that's something to uh, watch out for. I'll be changing breakers up here, but I need to change one more breaker in this entire conversion process. And that is one of the breakers in my 7,000 watt generator. In the generator, there is a 30 amp breaker and a 20 amp breaker. The 30 amp breaker right now, as it is in my 30 amp system, runs up to the transfer switch behind this panel. And uh, that's, how, that's how my RV gets power from the generator when I want to use the generator to, uh, as the power source. However, the other breaker, the 20 amp breaker, that runs a power just to this switch. And since I don't need that switch, I can actually remove that cable. However, removing that cable, actually, because of the size of it, I'm going to use it elsewhere. So that's kind of comes in handy. So now I only have one 30 amp that's going to be going to uh, the PD52, uh, the new transfer switch. And because now it's doing uh, two different legs of 120, I'm going to be running I need to put another 30 amp breaker in. And because this one's not needed anymore, I can literally just take out the 20 amp breaker and put in a 30 amp one. And what I found when uh, trying to find this darn little bugger, it's actually really hard. Uh, I brought it out and I saw like, oh, it says air packs, you know, that'll be easy. It's got all the, the wording really cleanly on it. And I thought, oh, that'll be so easy. And it's not easy to find it. So you can search 
when you want to get your new breaker, you can either search by the brand name on the breaker, or you can search by the brand of the generator and maybe the model and then type breaker after that and you might be more successful that way. I think these names on these little breakers that manufacturers, you know, like like this uh, the generator brand that I have which is Onan, um, you know, they don't want you to go buy the breaker alone, they want you to buy it through Onan. So uh, you can either find it that way or if you're like uber savvy, they might change the uh, serial numbers and you can find them with a slightly altered uh, intro serial number, intro part, and then the same number afterwards and then you can buy it by through like a distribution center. So either way, um, this was a little spendy but um, <laughs> I found it and, um, uh, and I'm, so I'm all set for, for this one. So once you know what you have in your current RV and system and then you've got a diagram to know what you need and uh, you know sometimes you don't need to buy extra things because you might have it already in the current system so then you can make a shopping list and go get all those things and then after that you're really ready to just start running the cable and then hooking it up